Everybody talks about Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but one heavily used technology is often forgotten – infrared. Today we will remember this technology and bring it to the today's world of microcontrollers like the ESP32 and the ESP8266 and to technologies like MQTT and Node-RED. And as usual, we will dig a little into the basics. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. Today, we will use infrared rays to detect objects and find a way to make the detector immune against interference from daylight. We will use standard photodiodes as well as IR receivers to detect signals and see the difference. Then we will use infrared instead of LoRa or Wi-Fi to transport information over the air. We will enable an Arduino Uno to receive, learn and send infrared codes. We will port the infrared or IR library to the ESP32 and implement MQTT. Finally, we will build a device which can control our home appliances like TVs or lights. This device should be able to receive signals from an IR remote controller and transfer them via MQTT to Node-RED. Light is the radio frequency with the shortest wavelength you can use as a hobbyist to transport your information over a distance. LoRa, for example, has a wavelength of 30 cm, Wi-Fi one of 12 or 5 cm and infrared light only 960 nanometers, which is very, very short. This is why we do not use antennas to send or receive IR. We usually use LEDs to send and phototransistors or photodiodes to receive infrared. Unfortunately, these parts are dirt cheap and simple to use. Much easier than antennas. And this is the reason why many, many devices in our homes use IR for communication. If we want to steer the TV or the newly purchased LED lighting system, often the simplest way to control them is IR. And IR has another nice feature. Because its light is invisible to our eyes, it is handy to detect the presence of things. So let's start with the detecting presence application first. As said before, we have to have a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter is a simple 5 mm LED which emits IR. As a receiver, we use a simple phototransistor or photodiode. I leave a link in the description if you are interested in the difference between the two. We could also use light dependent resistors to detect IR, but because their reaction time is too slow, we will not use them today. By the way, you can easily distinguish between the sender and the receiver, even if their form factor is similar. The sender is transparent and the receiver is black. This black color blocks the visible light from the chip. Unfortunately, not entirely as we will see later on. And you find many other forms of phototransistors or diodes. Let's start to play with these parts. We have to add these two resistors to limit the current to both parts and place the sender and the receiver in an opposite position. The receiver's voltage is low as soon as the transmitter is switched on. As soon as we interrupt the infrared ray, the receiver gets no light anymore and its output voltage goes to high. This is a simple detector for things. Of course, light is also reflected by many surfaces. So we can also place a transmitter and a receiver close to each other and direct them in the same direction. Now the receiver is low if nothing is in front and high if the IR is reflected by something in a reasonable distance. Like that, we can detect presence, not distance. If you want to measure range using this method, you have to watch video number 119. Emitters and receivers in this layout can be bought 
as one part and are called reflective IR sensors. Unfortunately, the receiver quickly can be fooled. If we take my torch, for example, we can fake the presence of something because, as I said before, the filter is not 100% and the IR diode also reacts to strong other light sources, like daylight. Let's use our TV cupboard as an example. I want that the TV automatically switches off when somebody closes the door. I placed such a reflective sensor behind the door to detect a closed door. Unfortunately, the sensor did not switch on when the door was opened. Do you know why? Correct, because it recognized the ambient light and was not able to distinguish it from the reflected light. It thought the door is still closed and the light is the reflected light from the LED. Disappointing. But we will see later on how I solved the problem. As mentioned before, IR can be used to transport information through the air. Let's do that. I connect my Morse key to the sending diode and the visible LED to the receiver. And really, we can transmit data over the air. The receiver gets the Morse code. Of course, we can also transmit much faster signals. If I connect a square wave of 5 kHz, we see it coming through to the receiver. No problem. Unfortunately, also here, we have to deal with ambient light. Especially daylight includes a fair share of IR, which is superimposed on the IR of the sending LED. What to do? We have to find a way for the receiver to distinguish between ambient light and light sent by the sender. The easiest way to do that is to switch the sender off and on. Because the ambient light is stable, we easily can distinguish the two by adding a high-pass filter to the receiver and filter the DC component out. All IR remote controllers use this approach. They switch with frequencies from 30 to 40 kHz. Most common is 38 kHz. TV remotes became very common in the 80s and 90s. This is why we can buy complete receiver devices with built-in amplifiers, filters and detectors, for example, for 38 kHz. And they are very cheap. I added an NE555 to the sending LED and replaced the receiving photodiode with a 38 kHz receiver. The sender sends now a 38 kHz signal. Ambient light is no more able to disturb my system. And in our living room, the TV switch works perfectly when the door is opened. So my wife was happy. Until she wanted to switch the TV channel. Can you imagine what happened? As I said, I used an ordinary 38 kHz receiver. And the remote she used sent a 38 kHz signal in the direction of my receiver. As soon as she pressed a key, my receiver assumed the IR from the remote controller is part of the reflected light from the closed door. And it switched the TV off. I can assure you she was not amused. And if I remember right, I even heard the word nerds. So back to the drawing board. We will later see why I'm still married. Back to our Morse key. Of course, we still can transmit Morse code over the 38 kHz link. Also here, it is safe against ambient light. And it works over a longer distance too. Morse is fun but hard to learn. This is probably why the manufacturers of TVs choose a different way to talk to their TVs. They invented a code for each button on the remote control and transmitted these commands from the remote to the home appliance. This fact had an additional effect. Because each manufacturer invented his own code, the customers had to have many different remote controllers laying on their living room tables if they bought devices from different manufacturers. 
and with the introduction of more and more remote controls, each with different buttons and different codes for these buttons, a jungle developed. Let's now look at the signal sent by a remote. I have here two receivers in parallel. One plain vanilla IR photodiode or transistor and a dedicated IR receiver for 38 kHz. The photodiode detects the 38 kHz carrier frequency including the code, whereas the IR receiver only delivers the demodulated digital signal. As expected. We have now everything to build a sender to control our appliances. And we know enough to create a receiver to control our home automation system through, for example, node red. But we still have to deal with this jungle of different codes. If we want to mimic remote controls or want to understand the buttons pressed on a remote control. Fortunately, we can use different Arduino libraries to deal with this situation. These libraries usually have two distinct functions. Send IR codes and receive IR codes. To receive codes, you have to connect an IR receiver to a pin, not a standard photodiode. For the transmitter, an ordinary IR diode is okay. If I use an Arduino Uno, I have to connect the sending diode to pin 3. Why is that? Because generating a frequency of 38 kHz is not easy for an Arduino. It is quite fast for this technology. The simplest way is to use a PWM port and set its frequency to 38 kHz and the duty cycle to 50%. Then the processor itself only has to switch the port on and off. This switching is done with a much slower speed. But let's look at the codes. Most of them have a preamble or leader code and address bits followed by data bits. And we can look them up in large databases. But we can use a more straightforward method. We use our receiver to log the data sent by our remote controller. Then we do not have to deal too much with protocols and lookup tables. This simple Arduino sketch, for example, receives many different codes and shows it in serial monitor. If you point this remote control towards the IR receiver on the Arduino and press the, for example, on button, the Arduino shows the code in serial. If we push this button on the Arduino, it sends the received code via its IR diode to the appliance and you can check if it reacts and switches on. In my lab, I have new LED lights, which can be switched by this IR remote control. Of course, we do not want to do this manually all the time. We want to have this done by MQTT and connect our IR sender to node red. So we need at least an ESP8266 or better, an ESP32. For those who are interested why I'm still married. I did the same thing as the manufacturers of TVs. I invented my own code. Of course, entirely different from all existing codes and completely new. Why that? Because I can. I had to replace the NE555 with an ATtiny85. This microcontroller creates the signal and checks if the received signal carries my code. Only then it knows that the light was reflected and the door is closed. And I was astonished when our friends came next time. My wife proudly presented her unique automated door. Somebody please explain me women. Before I lose the thread, we wanted to get our ESPs to behave like an IR receiver and sender. If we go to the Arduino library and to its description, we see that the ESP32 is not supported for sending codes. But this is precisely what we need if we want to control our devices using NQTT. Bad luck. At least somebody already ported the library to the ESP8266. But of course, this is not good enough. The ESP32 seems to have even a built-in handling of IR codes. 
but this feature is not well documented. You find a short sketch on my GitHub if you want to experiment with it. It seems that you switch Serial 2 into a mode where it speaks IR code instead of Serial. Then you just connect an IR LED to this pin. But I wanted to stick to the Arduino library and decided to port the sending part to the ESP32. If you use the library from my GitHub, it should work for the ESP32. At least our example sketch from before works without problems. Now we have to take notes of the codes for the on and off commands of the LEDs and add MQTT support to our device. If you watched my last video about LoRa, you know how easy this can be done. We even add a reverse channel and add an IR receiver diode to the ESP and send all incoming signals as an MQTT message back to Node-RED. Now we either can use a remote controller to control aspects for our home automation system or control our IR controlled appliances using Node-RED. What do we want more? We even could distribute several such devices in our living room to cover all angles. And if all of them subscribe to the same topic, they also will send out the same command. Maybe you have to add a small addressing scheme to avoid that all devices send the same code at the same time. Because then our IR controlled appliances would see an undetectable clutter. Summarized, we built a setup with infrared light and detected the presence of objects. We found a way to make the detector immune against interference from daylight. But we had to make it also immune against signals from the TV remote. We saw the difference in signals if we used regular photodiodes and dedicated IR receiver chips. We used IR as a carrier to transport Morse and other codes through the air, without LoRa or Wi-Fi. First, we used an Arduino Uno to receive, learn and send out IR codes. Like that, we had the proof of concept that our idea works. Then, we used the ported IR library to build an MQTT-enabled ESP32 device. Finally, by connecting this device to Node-RED, we were able to control our lab lights with no thread. We could also use this device to receive signals from an IR remote controller and influence no thread with these messages. For example, we could start the low light if we switch our TV on. And the best, my wife is happy with her new device. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.